Hi guys, it's me, it's Anne, I'm back. Yeah, you just can't get rid of me. Anyway, the most wonderful group of ladies that I have ever been introduced to, the Dirty Half Dozen, Anya Stamper, otherwise known as Pink Sweets, mostly got us together and rounded up doing stuff, and Valerie came up with our nickname, that's Give Me Lip and More, and every so often we get together and do collaborations on different themes, and this time is no different. It's gonna be a new year shortly, and we decided that we needed to do some New Year's glam. Every one of us has our own choice for what colors we do, and yeah, I'm kind of pink this time. I got this nifty little pink sweater with little pearls all over it that I picked up at the Salvation Army. Now, it was on one of my hauls, so when I did my mini haul with little pieces of makeup and little bits of this and that and my one sweater from Salvation Army, and I decided, since it was so pretty, I would wear it with this look. So I have got my pinks going. I've done my left, my left eye already. Lashes and all. Yes, I got adventurous. Did you know that trying to put on lashes, if you never have, is a pain in the tushy? It really is, because you get them where you think you want them. You get them set just right in one spot. You go and try to put one of the ends down, and the other end jumps up and grabs hold of some place that you never wanted it. It's very annoying. It's a little tricksome, but you got to admit, if you get them on, and you get them on relatively straight, they look pretty spiff. Anyway, let me see if I can get this other eye done and then finish the whole face. What I'm going to be starting with, I've got a whole raft of little palettes and stuff of all make, manner, and description laying down here. I have got my Peachy Queen by Koki that I'm going to be using. I'll put the, the, the names of the colors and stuff in the description because trying to do that where you have to do this all the time because all the names are on the back yeah it just it loses something plus the some of the other palettes i have don't exactly have names so anyway let us see if we can get started here i am taking just a fluffy brush fluffy Yes, and it's still got pink on it from when I did this side. And I'm taking this really pale pink here. I don't know exactly if it's going to show up pink on the camera, but it's supposed to be pink. It looks pink to me. Anyway, I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to move to... Let's see, which one did I go to next? Yeah, I went to this one next. And then I started messing around with the other palettes. Now, I've got Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer on. Now, Allison did a review a few back, a few days back, with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer. She didn't particularly like it. I love it. That gives you two different opinions on the product before you go looking for it. Not necessarily expert opinions, but opinions. Yeah, we're a pretty opinionated group. Okay. Now, I've told you that I have hooded eyes, which I do. Watch. See them disappear? That lower lid here just disappears into the folds. That's how it works. I'm stuck with it. And the other thing is, I lost a considerable amount of weight. At one point, I weighed 450 pounds. I'm now well under 300. No, I'm not telling you, because I haven't been weighed recently. But I've been well under 300 for quite some time. But that between that and my age, that means I've got very mobile skin in here. So I've got excess 
tissue because of the weight change, but there's also just the fact that I am no longer a quote-unquote spring chicken. So yeah, I've got chicken skin for eyelids, and it's how it is. Now, this look shouldn't actually take too terribly long unless I spend too much time. I was wrong. It's this one down here, not this one over here. Anyway, it shouldn't take too terribly long as long as I just keep going and don't get too hung up on any one thing in particular. Now, partially because of the hooded lids and partially because of the crepey stuff, I end up sometimes going higher towards the eyebrow than is currently fashionable. Now, they will tell you that going too close to the eyebrow nowadays makes you look older, and part of that is the closing up of the eye that happens because you've got all this stuff going from here to here, and then your eye, eyebrow, eyelashes practically get sucked in to that hooded crease, but some of the perception of you being older is also because it's an older style. It just simply is an older style. See, when I was growing up, you just like covered everything. If you were allowed to use makeup. See, I was born in 1958, 60 years ago. Wow. So it does make a difference because way back when, in the Dark Ages, there were things that you just didn't do. And let me explain to you about what good girls didn't wear. Teons of makeup, for one thing. Now, I'm going into my, um, the color workshop pink collection that came with that huge box that I reviewed, and I'm spraying, it's a little water. It's not, um, it's not actually setting spray. Setting spray is too expensive to use just to wet your brush a little. So yeah, it's an empty setting spray bottle that I've put plain water in. My actual setting spray is back over here, and it's still got its lid on it, which is how I tell them apart. If they ever fall fall down in the floor and mix their lids up, I'm going to be SOL trying to figure out which one's which. Now, with any luck, my light over here that's hitting me straight in the face will stop doing this flutter thing and behave itself. Now, this is a slightly glittery pink and I likes it a lot <laughs> and I kind of drag the uh, the lower eyelid colors all the way up into the crease just a little bit so that when my eyes are open, you can actually still see where some of the color is supposed to be. I keep telling you, this stuff is hard. I'm old. It's hard. Yes, I'm being pitiful. Feel sorry for me. Go ahead. You can do it. I bet. Now, this, this color... This one right here, which is kind of a pale beigey gold, is from the Elf 
prism palette. I'm going to put that right here because I like it here. I told you I'm going to be all over the place with palettes here. silly thing we're not there. there you go now in this color workshop palette with all these grays and mattes and there's actually a lot of shimmers in here and there's this gray shimmer right here that I am going to work with on the very outer edge of my eye now a lot of people will call this the outer V I tend to call it the outer seven because the way I work with it it tends to have more of a seven shape than a actual V. Especially if I'm going to try to make it look like I've got a wing going. See, build it up just a little at a time right here at the outer corner to darken it down a little bit drag it out this way sweep it back in so it's more of a seven motion the idea is if you've ever tried to do a winged liner with like liquid eyeliner on a hooded eye you already know that you are talking about one of the most annoying attempts at anything that there is because that hooding here you see all this where it's all wrinkled up and everything and all loose and flappy try dragging the brush for a liquid eyeliner through that mess you are not going to be happy with your quote unquote wing this is my favorite way to cheat it You make the wing shape, sort of, and drag things around to where you need them. This gives you your darker outer corner to pull things open. It gives you a contrast that works really well when you put a bit of highlight in the corner. Because it doesn't really do much good to put highlight in the corner if you don't have a contrast to play against. All right looks relatively even. I'll take some of that brighter pink and drag that under here. Now the little bit of highlight that I threw in the corner is from still from the elf prism palette but it's the first real gold shade 
in. It's not the beigey gold, it's the first real gold shade. I'll have to check and see if they've got any names on, no, no names. No names on these shades. Now, a little more pink. This is technically a lip liner, but if it's safe to go in my mouth, it's safe to go here. I just ran it through the waterline. Ain't it pretty? And I'm going to take, this thing is a godsend. This is the Maybelline Master Precise Skinny Eyeliner. Look at this thing. It's puny, okay? Puny. And for doing a tight line, it is a marvel because it's so small, it gets under here, usually without causing a lot of trauma. This one is not going to be that dark because it's a brown. But I'm out of my black one. And I'm sorry, when I looked out a little while ago, when it was still early enough to try to go to the store, it was pretty close to whiteout out there. So, yeah, not so much. Okay. Other than the eyeliner and the lashes and a little mascara, that's it. This is probably one of the easiest pretty looks I have ever done for anything that's supposed to be glam. What do you think so far? I'm going to pop off and I'm going to get my, I've already primed my face, I'm going to get my foundation on. You've already seen people put foundation on in a hundred million different ways. I use the Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Breathable in 100 Ivory, also known as Pasty. And I use the matching concealer, also from Rimmel. I will be right back, and I will sit here and put my the last of the makeup on over the foundation while we chat some more. What do you think? Pretty in pink? Oh, I just aged myself again. See you in a minute. Okay. Lashes, one on each side. A little mascara. Still haven't done the bottom lashes for the mascara. Gotta leave something to play with. Anyway, I've got the foundation on. I love this stuff. I rarely have to set it. It's just it just drops down to a really nice finish. Now, for some people, this is not gonna work. This is one of those things that you, you really have to try a foundation more than one time sometimes to decide whether or not it's working for you. This one I love. I love it. However, I also love my ColourPop Stick Foundation. Oh, oh, that is a wonderful foundation. Now, I know um, Revolution Beauty has a stick foundation as well, but I've never tried it. I'm going to have to try it at some point, but I do things really slow when it comes to trying on foundations and that sort of thing, mainly because I live on a disability budget, so I don't run out and buy every time somebody has a release. I don't run out and buy 
really expensive palettes. If I tell you something is it from the drugstore, that means you can go to a drugstore and unless it's a exclusive to a particular drugstore, you will be able to go in to a drugstore or a Walmart or a Target or a Family Dollar or something like that, sometimes even the Dollar Tree, you will be able to go in, find this stuff at your local pharmacy, and go fondle it and pick it up and really look at what the color looks like to you in person. It's one thing that kind of irks me about some of the other presenters when they start talking about quote unquote drugstore lines when, okay, yeah, it's in the quote unquote drugstore price range. But you that in some cases you still have to go to Ulta to find it. Or you have to go to like Sally Beauty Supply. Or, you know, like Marshalls or something. But they're still calling it drugstore. So I'm like, I try to be careful about that because as far as I'm concerned, if I can't find that Megillah at the drugstore, it's not drugstore. And I like to find it at the drugstore so I can take my silly self over there and pick it up and try it on. And sometimes the drugstore is nice enough to have swatches. And if they don't, they still have a color chart right there that you can look at and go, hmm, let me stick my hand up next to this and see if it's possibly going to work for me. Okay, this is my elf, yes, elf. This is a contour bronzer palette. Got four shades, play with them. I usually use the darkest one, the darkest matte in the bottom right corner. When I turn it upside down, it's over here to do things like under my jawline and that to kind of, I don't know who I'm trying to kid, they can still see all this. And then I use the slightly sparkly here and the matte here, and I just kind of mix them together to do these areas. So I've kind of got the bronzer going on and I've kind of got the contour. You know, the thing that people call bronze to her. Anyway, almost forgot to tell you what I was doing and just warming up the face a little bit here and there. Yes, I'm getting it up under my hair because my hair is fairly thin through here and it's just kind of like picked at and played with. So you're going to see parts of my face that other people will ignore doing because their hairstyle is not showing it. You're not seeing all this stuff. You know, there are some people who don't bother with foundation if they've got heavy bangs. Up to them. But this kind of brings some color into a face that, really, children, I don't got a lot of color. I am pale. One might even say pasty. I believe I said that earlier, too, when I was talking about my, my makeup color. Alrighty. Now, what I also do, which some people think is kind of silly, because my nose is not really crooked or really terribly wide. However, it's hard to see. And the way it sits... I've got a really shallow bridge, so I don't really get a lot of shadow to make it stand out. So I put a little bit of that matte contour in the lightest color right along the edge here, barely enough to kind of dust through.
because this makes it stand out just a little bit so that I don't my eyes don't look like they run together quite so quick. See, I've got now a little more prominence in the bridge here, or at least optically. Now, this blush, this is out of that color workshop big box, yet again. And you see that? You can hardly get a brush into any of those, so I kind of just swirl it around a little and see where we end up. Most of the time, doing that, the color is not awful. Fun. Get just a little color. See, I'm not going to get really crazy with the color on the rest of the face for the most part because what I really want them to look at is these eyes. I've had them a long time. And I think they're one of the prettier parts. Of me, anyway. If you don't think so, that's fine. Don't be mean. I'll mug at you. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put... shadow on the lower lashes. Said eye shadow. The mascara. Got this really cool mascara from Studio AOA which is also known as Shop Miss A. And they kind of designed it for a little bitty lower lashes that are always hard to catch. And it's a little tiny fine wand that does a great job at snagging those little fine eyelashes under the eye. I'm rather fond of it. It's called Skinny. It's this tiny, tiny little wand. It's smaller than that underliner for Maybelline. Look at that little thing. Tiny. Now that I've got that bit out of the way, let's see. Oh, yeah. I've actually got half a dozen options here for highlighter. But I think I'm going to stick with the theme. This is the... the the color workshop and this is the illuminator palette out of that big box again we've got a little tiny pan with a bunch of colors that you can't get a brush in any one of them easily so a little pink a little champagne How much highlighter you put on is up to you. If you want to be blingy and be able to be spotted from space, 
go for it. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. If you want to be subtle, go for it. Some days I'm subtle. It's not often. And some days I will put enough highlighter on that I look like I am wet, shiny face all over. Just literally wet, shiny face all over. A little bit down the nose to go between the edges of the little darker lines. A little bit on the cupid's bow. I don't always like this doing the Cupid's bow thing. Because some of these highlighters taste nasty. You know, but it's like a little highlight, a little highlight, a little more highlight, yeah, whatever. Draw attention to the eyes. Oh, you like my new brush? I got it at Dollar Tree for a dollar. I love Dollar Tree. It is so handy. Now, the big box that I reviewed just before Christmas, which was the Colorworks 80, it was 86 or 89 piece set for 15 bucks. Now, granted, it's a gift set type thing that usually is only out during Christmas. However, you may still be able to find some of them. Walmart carries them. If you're real lucky and you want one of these, it was 15 bucks for all this makeup. And if you want, you can always check and see if Walmart still has a few, and if they still have a few, they're probably on clearance about now. So they're going to be like, cheap. Is it the best makeup in the world? No. Is it the worst makeup in the world? No. It's not like the stuff that you buy on the street that people are going, oh my God, it's 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 fake makeup and, and there's like poo in it and all that stuff. So, and yes, there are some people who are rude enough to make fake makeup. And if you get it, you are going to have serious problems with it. Usually, though, the fake makeup is done by people who are trying to make it look like it's makeup done by some of the more famous people. I mean, you can get all kinds of stuff that looks sort of like the famous people did it, but, uh, yeah, mm -mm. no, you have to look close. And the problem is, there are some of the makeups that are very, very nasty. There's some of it that, like, somebody bought, bought what they thought was a Jeffree Star um, highlighter. And when they got it, this crumbly stuff fell out of the pan. And it was supposed to be one of his green highlighters. And it literally looked like dry Portland cement being poured out in their hand. It was really scary. People have gotten eye infections. You know, it, it can be reasonably okay most of the time getting even some off-brand stuff that they're just off-brand. A lot of stuff that comes through um, Amazon is like that. You get some off-brand stuff for pretty cheap. But if you don't go after the stuff that is purporting to be something high-priced and the price it just looks too good to be true, run. Just run. It's, it's, it's not necessarily a safe thing to do.
Okay. Now this is an Emori lip pencil. And it's in L11 Cosmos. Now, I've got old person's disease with these lips, you know, the little crinkly lines that like to bleed. Sometimes the lip pencil helps. Sometimes it doesn't. It all just depends. And I've got this pale frosty pink that I got from the color workshop. There is no name on it. It's just the pale frosty pink. That one is almost a reminder of stuff that my grandma used to wear and my mom used to wear. Just quiet pinks. I have a tendency to head toward nudes now and again, but every so often I have to have grandma colors. And since I've got pink on the eyes, I put pink on the mouth. It doesn't like get too outrageous. It doesn't stand out too very much. So, I can work with that. I'm going to take that little ball out. And I'm going to take this little ball out. And even though, yes, I've got holes in my ears. I have earrings that I have collected over the years that, believe me, some of these earrings a drag queen would love. And they're clips. Welcome to Rhinestone World. Oh yeah, don't worry. I have the necklace that goes with it. A little pink glam for the end of the year. Let me know what you think. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope the new year is good to you. <laughs>